a lot of people, Buddy Halley, all those people that were around in the 50s, they just were such showmen. It's, it's inspirational to watch them and, and listen to their music and, and realize how simple the music is, but it just, just hits you in a way. It's just nice to do something that people enjoy, you know, present myself, because it's very, it's very me. And if I can share that with other people and connect with other people that are also interested in this, that's what life's all about. I'd say, yeah, my love for the 50s and 60s is definitely based around a lot of the fashion and the music and I like the formality that people had. You know, if they were going to go out even to the grocery store, they would put on decent clothes. Being into older rock and roll music, I'd look at the record covers and see, oh, Elvis is wearing this cool shirt. Like, I know that's not made now, so I got to go out and find it you'll go into a time capsule house where someone has lived there since the 40s and hasn't updated anything and you'll just find all their old clothes and anything else. Basically, at first I go in the closet and I start to look for mainly wooden hangers. If there's wooden hangers, that means the clothes are probably from the 50s and before and they're all stained to heck, but I can I use a certain cleaner that can pretty much get any stain out, so I'll pretty much bring them back to new. The collection kind of grew because when you're looking for those things and you see something out there that is cool but is not going to fit you, you still don't want to leave it on the shelf or the house that you're finding it at. You want to take it. I said, I can find somebody that's going to want to wear this. I definitely always wanted to have my own place and I definitely was always a collector of old things. So I sort of always played around with the idea of combining the two and then I realized how it was possible. And here we are. I didn't really think about what I was doing when I would cut my friends and my family's hair. I would just kind of give them mohawks and other kinds of haircuts like that. I did a lot of house calls for many years. I would, you know, drive all over town and all you need is a place to plug in your equipment and, and your clients, they'll follow you pretty much wherever you go. Even if it's in a closet somewhere, they're going to say, well, if you do a good haircut, I'm going to, I guess I got to go there. <laughs> I was inspired to become a barber because I liked the idea of the social aspect of a barbershop and what it meant to developing a community. Trades are very important and overlooked now, I think. And uh, just, uh, just being a part of a heritage of, of barbers. Sometimes it is a little bit of like an obsession, but I, I just I have to hustle to make it because it's just me. I don't have employees or anybody else really helping me right now. Um, and it's and, and I'm proud when people come in here and they they get excited about the place. You know, it's like because everything in here I put here on purpose in every spot. So it's nice to it's nice to hear joy. Following one interest, leading into another one, and just just connecting the dots. It's just a never ending thing and it's uh, it's really important